ever consistent ultimate pool pro off and dad. How do you approach this if you're Gareth? I mean, whereas for a lot of the lower ranked pros, table time is valuable. Generally less so uh, for Gareth. I mean, I suppose one thing it's probably worth saying, and I suspect we'll talk a bit about this over the weekend, is that he's been playing a lot of Chinese pool recently. He's been out in the Far East playing in some events and doing some ambassadorial work. So he hasn't played as much English pool as he had been in the lead up to that. So I suppose actually this format may not be the worst for him. So use this first group stage almost as a bit of practice. Yeah, I think for Gareth, I mean, he's got so many different commitments on at the moment and we all know how good a player he is. On the ultimate this year, maybe he's had a bit more of a quiet season than he would have set out for himself. Um, obviously at the last Pro Series event, um, he lost out to Mark Selby in one of them and Cole Bedford put in a very good performance against him as well, fairly early on in both both events. and. Obviously, on the flip side, you've got Arfan, who was in the final of one of those Pro Series events. And Arfan, you could argue, maybe is in the better form of the two, but we all know what Gareth can do. We all know what he can deliver. And I mean, if he's coming out in the first frame and making little cannons like that to start off with and setting himself up for a nice clearance, then this is anyone's game. Yeah, such a consistent player. Take a minor miracle if he wasn't to go through this first group stage. Although, yes, one should learn never really to talk like that because there's always a surprise to be had with this format. Well, I mean, if you look at the gr group that was there last week, I mean, not a lot of people would have had Scott Gillespie going out in the first stage. And I don't think any top pros really look at it like that, though. That's, you don't want to be losing any match that you can help. And there you see the famous Gareth Potts cube end on his break as well. well. I think one of the best breaks I think I've ever seen. Just the, As he explained about it before, he uses that bend just to push the cue as far through as possible so that there's less distance between the white just kind of running loose before it makes impact to that pack. So you're generating the most power out of it. And As you can see from the result that he got, OK, the balls haven't split absolutely perfectly for him, although that cannon has helped but it just generates so much power and you're just so likely to make a ball off of it. But this is another good opportunity for him here. Perfectly exemplifies the combination of power and precision. That break threw his whole body in it, but in a really controlled way. And now, as he gets to the table, a couple of delicate shots to start with. So hard to replicate that break. A lot of the time, people are going to be watching events like this and trying to pick up some tips for their own game. But generally, if you're trying to drive the cue down to the table, there's just so much that can go wrong. It's sort of the cliche that you're going to put it through the cloth of the table, but I mean, even just the, the timing of it, even if you don't do that, it's actually a very hard break to get right. I was going to say, a lot, I think a lot of clubs in England would have been scared when Gareth was suggesting to do that kind of break off, that they would end up seeing a few more accidents on tables. And but, I mean, Gareth has just had so much time to perfect his craft that you know, he, you'd never worry about him doing something like that. Obviously, with other players, maybe with a bit less experience, you might be a little bit more concerned or put out a warning, but just so effective in what he does. It's become a very cool trademark for him as well. Cause everyone always talks about the break, and it's a kind of nice thing for people to be talking about. It's very eye-catching. We see lots of people trying to take photos of it. What is equally eye-catching right now, though, is the way he's going through these finishes. It's not really going to change the, the outcome of the match that much, you wouldn't fancy. Time ticking down a bit as well, and his opponent already five to the good. He'll be able to laugh this off because he has come up against an opponent playing in extremely good form, but I think Arfan might well be wanting to get himself back to the practice table. He's got a bit of time off. It's not in action again until match six when he'll be taking on Matt Brearley. So he's got a bit of time to maybe get something to eat and get a bit of practice in. I mean, in all fairness, this game isn't quite done yet. I mean, the clearance is very, very tricky here for Gareth, especially if that red on the left-hand side is just a bit close, too close to the middle to drop in. I mean, the way that he's played it, I figure he can. But 
It's extremely tight. He's just looking at it now. If it drops in, you're going to favour him to win the frame, but this is not simple by any means. That's a great shot. Great example of how to play the shot as well. I was trying to put a more positive strike, so queuing low on the cue ball. Was able to hit, Matt, it was able to hit it a bit harder and killed the pace. He's just in automatic at the moment. You can just see it in the way that he's walking around the table. And I do feel for Arfan here because, as I say, Arfan hasn't had much of a look in. and Arfan will definitely do some damage in this group later in the day. But I think for now, he's just going to have to settle for a 6-0 loss against Gareth there. Well, that's all he can do. <laughs> Off and musters a smile as he goes to shake hands. That was about the only thing he had to smile about in that match. Speaking of battling it out, Gareth Potts back in action after this 6 0 win in the first one. I know you're on ne next, Jimmy, so we'll, we'll let you slip away and prepare for your next match. Best yeah. of luck with that one. Yeah, thanks very much. So as Gareth steps up in his second match of the day, can he continue the form from the first one? Absolute masterclass performance. Winning 6-0 against one of the best players in the group in the shape of Arfan Dad. Luke Terry joins me again for this one. If it's anything like the last one, Luke, we're going to be in for a treat. Yeah, I mean, Gareth just showed such good form in his last game. When he played uh, when he played Arfan and Chris, to be fair, got on the right side of Tom Jones and his as well. And obviously, when you've got winner v winner, both players will be coming in with a fair amount of confidence. So Chris almost might treat this as a bit of a free hit. That he's already got his win on the board. He knows Gareth is going to be the toughest game in the group. So he might just let his arm go a little bit more. As for Gareth, I mean, he'll want to be get out, getting out of this group as soon as possible. He knows two wins will put him in a good position. So. He'll probably be wanting, be wanting to try and fly through this game and get himself more secure. This is a great chance for Chris because having won that first game, if he could win this one as well, he'd be all but qualified, which for a group that he's in against all these tough players would be a fantastic start to the day. He's going to have to do it the hard way, though, if he does do that. Such a precise player. I mean, that shot, if you're not almost straight on this ball, just the slight angle to screw over to the side cushion. You're nowhere, but Gareth is just so accurate playing position. Well, it's just like they were all hanging over pockets, really, for Gareth then that, in that clearance. It was yeah, plus, of course, overnight as we go into tomorrow's sessions. Just feeling like you're part of the tournament is an important part of it. Well, almost had a golden break, but in the end it's got a dry break. Didn't quite get the jump on the cue ball that time. It, yeah, there was a little bit of a bend, but actually you just seen that the, the cue went slightly to the right of that line, which meant that you didn't go through it clean. And Once again, he can count himself a little bit unlucky because he has struck the balls well and they did split, but just little minor things like that. Seemingly a huge now on the break, which seems very harsh, but it's just the way of the world, I think. Contracting that bad luck, he had a bit of a result with where he left the ball. There wasn't a great deal Chris could do with that, so having to play the containing shot. Yeah, and it's not often you play safe against Gareth, but the way that these balls are lie, lying as things stand, there's just so much to do if you're going to make a clearance. I mean, Gareth is going to go reds, but with those two reds to the top left, the red on the right-hand side of the top half of the table, just so much work that needs to be done. I think he's looking at seeing if he can plant this down the line, but are you potentially going to lose this first red as well to the right-hand side of the table? That's another factor, so 
really high tariff shot this. Straight in the heart of the pocket. And that is very harsh if they both blocks each other. Looking at playing it off the yellow, I mean. Jimmy Croxton had a few highlight reels in the last frame. It looks like Gareth might be going for one here. Oh, what a shot from Gareth Potts. Beautifully judged. He's still not on the next red, so he's looking to play another blunt. You just sneak one past the other. We could. Very tight, but just able to find the edge of the pocket. Which he'll be pleased with, because that would have been a difficult plant. And I think this top red goes into that top right, so... It does. Didn't want to be close to the cushion, though. That's a little bit of an issue. Uncharacteristic shot. You wouldn't expect him to miss the pot, but it makes the position a bit harder. Go into that right middle. I mean, this is just another highlight reel, isn't it? I mean, if this goes into this middle, this is an unbelievable clearance again. Once again, when Chris Hampson played safe, he never, ever thought that Gareth would have cleared that. And a draw is a possible outcome here, so Gareth and Jimmy could both stay undefeated but we don't see that many draws in this format so more likely one of them will take a clear lead at the top of the table they've definitely been the two form players of the day so far Gaz has played to a very high level which I think is what everyone was expecting J Jimmy ranked slightly lower down but also a top 32 pro has turned up and played some phenomenal shots Two real highlight real clearances. Yeah, you're kind of looking at both ends of the spectrum of great play there, where Gareth is the one that is dishing and not really missing a ball. But then you've got Jimmy, and every time it looks like he's run himself into trouble, he's just pulling out the absolute ridiculous, which obviously both of those elements together make one world-class player. But both players are playing very, very well at the moment. And... I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it past it, Mark, if it did end up a draw between these two because there's not been much to separate them all day. No, absolutely. Gareth played probably the more sort of straightforward game. He sort of never looked like he was out of position, but Jimmy's definitely brought the A game, going for the big finishes time after time. It's obviously a more relaxing spot for both of them now. If this had been the first match, for example, of the day, it would have been a bit more pressured, but the fact they both know they're pretty much through. Certainly a draw would guarantee that and a win would put it beyond any doubt. Well, he's done well to find that line. He's gone incredibly close to two of the balls and gone past both of them. Yeah, Gareth had him in, in knots there, really. There wasn't much a, a lot that Jimmy could do, obviously, with these ultimate rules. It did require Jimmy to hit a cushion after contact, so it wasn't a case that he could just kind of dab up to a ball or anything like that. Forced him to play a shot. Hasn't quite worked out, but I think these two already being through, I don't think makes much of a difference towards this match, really, because they're both such strong competitors, and especially as they're both local lads as well. I don't think one of them would want to give the other the onus anyway. So, No, they're good friends, these guys, but enjoy a bit of banter off the table, so they'll be looking for bragging rights. This is not by any means going to be the biggest match they have played or will play. They're both going to hope that they get through to certainly the second round, if not the final tomorrow. That will matter more, but nonetheless, Saturday night, a bit of local support in. So Gaz can just get through to this yellow over the pocket. Nice angle to come back down the table. Pretty much resuming where he left off earlier on. Make it all look very simple. 
one nil to Gareth. Just a reminder for those of you just joining us, we're playing to the 30 minute first to six format, so whichever of those comes first. Well, at the, the very beginning of the tournament and then it got a little bit worse in the second match. Sometimes you maybe think about it too much. Well, I'll take that. Yeah, once again, the split is brilliant. Red's are in really good positions. He's got two over pockets. He's got kind of one problem by the side cushion, but... Looks like he's just going to float around the table and knock these in. Didn't really even get down to that shot, but... Yeah, this is a lovely position. If you can guarantee breaking like that, you'd be running a lot of frames. Well, I mean, it was the formula that Tom Cousins was really using when he was winning every single event. <laughs> Just absolutely hammering the break. The balls would split out, and next thing you knew, you were one nil down. It puts pressure on your own break when players are playing like that, and can very quickly get away from you. And Jimmy only levelled up a minute ago, and Gareth sort of was on two one ahead again. Yeah, and what a level of precision with that clearance. I mean, it may have looked an easy clearance, but it was one of those ones that it looked particularly easy because of the accuracy of his positional play. Right on stance than usual, Jimmy just trying to. Make sure he can get his arm right the way through. Well, it's almost a carbon copy of what Gaz has just done. Nice break, ball split out really well, but nothing down. Yeah, and it was kind of similar to Gareth that nothing really tracked towards a pocket. And you, can count, you can count yourself as a bit unlucky when you hit the break nice and don't make anything, but it has always been pot luck. There's no perfect method to break off. Even though some do get close, I mean, that Gareth break is unbelievable and I've never seen anything like it in my life, but at the same time, the one thing I would always say is it's, it's easy to find a bad break, but hard to find a good break. And the guys that are at the top of the game have just got a slightly better break than most. Sometimes when you find a good break, you think you've got it, and then it disappears again, and you can't find it. I, I mean, it also depends on what table you're playing on, what the venue's like. If it's humid, is it dry? I mean, all of these different factors come into how a table plays, and that affects every single part of a break-off. Very good shot, it should be said, down the right-hand rail a moment ago from Gaz. Decided to take on the difficult one early on in the clearance. Cued it beautifully. The surprise for that is that everything else is now in nice open play. Just looking at where he wants to play to get the second of these two reds to the top left-hand corner. The ball has been excellent so far today. Very precise striker of the ball. I'll be honest, I don't think I could tell you a time that Gareth has gone out of position today. No, he's making the game look really easy. I mean, it would be easy if you were to put together a highlights reel to say that Jim has played better because he's played a lot more big shots than Gareth has, but... The reason for that is Gareth just never slipped out of position. Very ominous signs this for all the other players because it doesn't even look like he's trying unduly hard. I mean, obviously, obviously he is, but just looks so relaxed somehow around the table. Just so unbelievably precise with both of them. It's very hard to replicate. Yeah, and I watched the, an interesting bit with Gareth, actually. And he was recently on YouTube doing a thing with Stephen Hendry. Um, and Stephen kind of mentioned to Gareth his 
his stance and the way he plays and he said it's it seems like you adapt it to every single every single form of the Q sport and Gareth said well I'd, I'd never change it like why change something that works and he's got a point because you see the success across all the, the Q sports that he's had why change it it's easy to do as it sounds I think one of the things that came out of that <coughs> interview where he was playing the frame of snooker against Stephen Hendry even Hendry himself was saying he finds it hard to play with the same technique on a pool table as a snooker table and Gaz was kind of demonstrating how it was possible to do the same with both. It's very often you have sneaker players who have a really Rolls-Royce technique, but then they end up having to sort of shorten it up because the pool table's smaller and just can't get quite the same results. <coughs> Incidentally, a pretty impressive standard of play that Gaz was putting on during that interview because he was talking whilst knocking in quite a few very good balls while they were playing sneaker. See, that's the thing, because you're not even concentrating when you're talking to somebody else, and yet you're still being able to find the pots and find the, the points that Gareth was. And if you can not concentrate and do that, then that is what makes you one of the best players on the planet, that you don't even have to focus on what you're doing and that you can just trust in your body to do it naturally is a skill that not even a lot of the top pros have. one that takes a long time to learn. It's all about the practice as well as the natural talent. See, Nails, a, a great double. Played it completely pocket weight. Never really looked like missing, but it was by no means a 100% shot, that one. And whilst, obviously, it looks like Jimmy might be about to go 5-2 down, he probably won't be too concerned about this because of the fact that Obviously, he knows that nothing's on it for either player. The one thing that would get Jimmy worried is if Gareth turned up tomorrow in the same form in that second group when actually there's a lot more at stake. Because at that point, all of a sudden, that really does put a lot of pressure on Jimmy to be able to find a top gear that maybe in his eyes, maybe he hasn't hit as many times as he would have liked. But playing Gareth at, the top tier, at his absolute top level is quite an intimidating factor, really. It's a reasonably long format, that best of three sets. I mean, they are all short sets if you get through to the final, but still, the best player is generally going to prevail. You would think Jimmy and Arfan are probably the only two in this group that could live with Gaz over that kind of length, and even then, they might not find it very easy. We've seen glimpses from all three of the other players, but maybe not doing it with quite the same consistency. Well, another great finish from Gaz. Had to play a couple of... Yeah, I think he's trying. Just won't get any results. Oh, don't tell me he's gone dry again. Oh, he has. They didn't quite initially split those. They kind of <coughs> banded together and then, yeah, they kind of just banded it together again in the middle of the table and Gareth just in absolute free flow at the moment yeah I don't think either player or anyone in the crowd is really expecting this match to go more than a couple more minutes these reds looking pretty nice now Rare moment of indecision. Gaz seems to be caught between a couple of shots. He's going to need to speed it up now, though, because he's used his extension and we're in the 15 second portion of the match. I was going to say, I'd be a little bit surprised if Gareth tried to kind of test the shot clock, test the clock now and try and time it down. But, I mean, it's fair to say that in every single match so far, Gareth has been exceptional. And to be fair, I mean, he blew away Arfan in the first game. He's blown away Jimmy in this one. 
and his biggest test so far has been Chris Hampson, and Chris Hampson played very well against him and still didn't even really get close. Well, what an afternoon and early evening's work it's been so far from Gareth Potts. Third masterful performance in a row. Friendly handshake between the players. The match played in a very good spirit, as you would expect. But just make some slight adjustments to the way he draws the cue back, depending on whether he wants to bend the cue more or get more draw on the ball. Well, and the answer to that break is just he's absolutely flushed it. You can see where the cue tip ends up. He's nearly at the middle pocket, but the way that these yellows have split, if he can, if he's got an opener, which a little smile on the face, maybe he hasn't got the opener he wanted, but. If he can find a good shot to get started, then this is a doable clearance. The only thing, if he was to opt for yellows, is that black is awkward. If he's not got an opening red, then he's going to have to do this the tricky way. Has opted for yellows. He's immediately looking at trying to get rid of one of his yellows in the middle pocket. I think the main reason he doesn't want to take this yellow into the left middle is because it's the most accessible one to get in the eight ball out, which is why he's opting to take the young, long yellow first, which is a very good shot. Because if you're, you're trying to play that cannon into the eight ball with any other ball, then it's going to require a lot of movement and a lot of distance from the white ball to be covered. And you don't want to be playing exact cannons like that because there's just so much room for them to go wrong. Definitely been a noticeable feature of his game today that he's just not really played the wrong shot at any point. Not only has he executed them well, but whenever there's been a choice to be made, he's played what in hindsight seems to have been the sensible choice. You can just see it immediately. He's going to try and come almost in behind the eight ball and just push it out so that he can leave it towards that bottom left and just leave himself on that yellow that's hanging over the middle right pocket. He just got it out enough. Body language is telling me he has. Yeah, there was a choice there. You could have hit it harder, but then you risk the white drifting further away. So he's trying to play pretty tight control. Well, the main thing with that was that if it was even slightly overdone, if that white hugs the cushion, then it sits in behind the red, which would have been unlucky, but it was a potential. But as it is, he's just played two perfect positional shots there. And it's underway. Difficult situation this for, for Tom. Things just didn't really go according to plan yesterday. Strange kind of day for him. He actually played pretty well in his first match against Chris Hampson. Every chance he could have won that would, I think, have set up a pretty different day had he got some early points on the board. As it was, it turned into one of those situations where it was kind of getting harder and harder. And he's got what promises to be his toughest match last. Gareth was close to unplayable yesterday, even for the, the top pros. I mean, I suppose you could say this morning, Gareth's got nothing to play for and Tom has got all the pressure off because he knows he's out. So maybe we could see a, a more free-flowing game. Yeah, I spoke to Tom last night, obviously after his final game and I think he was a bit down on himself he knows he could have played better but in all fairness to him I think after his first game against Chris when he didn't get the result there it almost seemed like the luck kind of went against him for the rest of the day and it's just what happens at top level pool it doesn't take a lot to go against you in order for you to lose four games in the way that he did because the standard's so high so I think Tom definitely has come back this morning I think He's, he thrives in big games. He really likes the idea of playing Gareth. Even though there's not much on this game anymore, it's still a big player and he'll still want to get a result here. So I, I can tell that Tom will still be gunning for this and Gareth's still got to mind his work a little bit because he, wanna, he won't want to go into his next group having just lost his final group game. No, and there's a matter of pride as well with Gareth, just such a professional, likes to win all of his matches.
tough mental situation this for, for Tom. It's a bit of an annoying format where there's nothing to play for on the second day because he's gone home last night knowing that he's going to have to come back for the first match of the day with not much on it. Well, I guess looked at the other way. He's going to play Gareth Potts in the main arena table. Lots of people watching on the stream. I mean, it's, it's a good opportunity. That's kind of what you play the game for. Yeah, it's all good experience points for Tom. And OK, yesterday didn't go his way, but he will take stuff out of it. At, at the end of the day, this match table does play differently to the majority of tables that he will have ever played on. So getting a bit of table time on it is only going to help him with good experience. Well, not that far away from a golden break. The eight ball tracking towards the corner pocket. As is usually the case with a front ball break, the eight ball doesn't really move, but a ball came around the table and clipped it towards the corner. More importantly, a red ball also went down, so Gareth stays out the table. Just slightly overrun there. He's going to be able to take the ball up to the left corner, which would then have opened up the one that's on the break line. So having to reroute down first. I like that shot because this was always going to be his problem ball. Obviously, it didn't have its natural pocket, which is where the eight ball is into that bottom right. Immediately got rid of that problem, and now we can just focus on the other balls up the top end of the table. Still needs to think about that yellow that's sat on the red towards the top left, as that will need to be landed on. But he's cleverly getting rid of the rest of his work on the table that he can just use these two just to float in behind it. It's a really good art of pattern play that you immediately spot those problem balls. You don't necessarily have to take them out straight away, but picking the time to do so is so key. Well, you said he's good with a 15 second shot clock. Given that this actually was quite an intricate clearance, he's good about it at real pace. And any thoughts that Tom had of opening up a big lead are now evaporated as Gareth levels up at three all. These group stages draws are fine. Just the player gets one point, two for a win. Gareth really took his time over that break after the last one went in off. You could tell it by the small had a lot more kind of feathers of the white before he eventually hit it. Eight ball tracking towards the middle pocket, but it's gone just high in the end. Yeah, and that eight ball's actually going to be a bit of an issue for him. Because I don't think it drops into that middle pocket. All of these reds are actually set up quite nicely otherwise, but a bit of work to do here. And the other thing is, is that in a clearance like this, if you go for it first and then miss, your opponent's clearance becomes a lot easier because you've got rid of a lot of their traffic. So Gareth's just got to be very cautious taking this on. been very good throughout the weekend and indeed throughout his career always having a plan for the problem ball so you can be absolutely sure that he'll have been looking at that eight ball and figuring out what he's going to do about it it's about the most awkward spot you can really get on a pool table because it's near enough the pocket you can't really double it but it's not near enough the pocket that it looks like it drops in the middle yeah so Garrett's just opting just to take out some of his work at the bottom end of the table and then he's going to use these two to either land right in behind that black or maybe set up just to kind of do what I would call like a micro cannon where you're almost just trying to move the black less than an inch. And that was a good shot up the table to land on the one on the rail early. So it's going to be the using the one in the middle of the top end of the table to find a way onto this eight ball. Looks like from the angle he's got, it looks like he's playing into it. Oh, obviously, thinks it just drops, oh, unless he's taking it down the line. Oh, it did just drop. That's deceptive from that overhead shot. You'd never have thought that dropped. In the end, it was actually quite a comfortable shot. That will probably come to the point where Chris and Jimmy have got to play them, and 
That's another great break. Just feels like both players have kind of stepped up and found their break in the last 15 minute interval before this match. Almost recognised the importance of all of these matches from now on and have decided that that break's going to go through clean every time. Kind of inevitability when you see Gareth at the table in this kind of position. The only congestion of the two near the eight ball, and it's just about room through, or may elect just to play touch into the eight ball just to open things up. Yeah, the touch into the eight ball is quite a nice shot because if you don't quite get it right, then. He's opted to take another, another route. I actually don't. Yeah, I don't blame him for that because playing a cannon is always risky. You know, any pool player coach would probably tell you that in a situation where you don't need to play a cannon, it's probably easier not to. But maybe decided also that getting the two at the bottom end of the table out of the way now. Gives the cannon a little bit more insurance. Yeah, this has got to be judged well. Yeah, it was judged perfectly. You just don't want to send the black too far over with that, otherwise you are knocking it into a safe position. As it is, he's caught it perfectly, and I think he's got a nice natural angle on this yellow, just to play around for the one in the middle. Yeah, played perfectly. Staple shot of all pool players that way. You play around two cushions. It means the cue ball sort of tracking back into the middle of the table, so easier to judge the position. Pace of play noticeably quickening up the last couple of frames. Five frames in the books now as we approach the half. Looking to see there whether that red past the yellow. Obviously thinks it does, has come around to try and land on it. Yeah, if that pot's direct, that would make life much easier. Looks like he feels he can just sneak it into the side of the pocket. Yeah, in fact, had a fairly full pocket. Now, with that ball moved, this actually looks much more open. When he first came to the table, it wasn't clear that he had a path, to, but now wouldn't bet against him clearing these up. I mean, it's just all looked so routine for Gareth this weekend. I mean, even, even when he was down in this game off, I missed that one ball, and next thing you know, Gareth is... All of a sudden, back on that form of just strolling around, putting the balls, making the clearances, and, and this is now an eight ball for a, a two frame advantage. Gareth's first look at the table after nine minutes of match clock and the score at one all. He's breaking for the first time. That's a great break from Gareth as well. It, it, it's really tough. As we kind of said before that actually Gareth's now been waiting quite a long time, and especially as Jimmy won the lag and had that first breaking dish as well. He hasn't had a look at the table yet. Well, in theory, for the 10 minutes the match clock's been going. Now he finally gets that visit. It's a great break. It's just got a little bit of work. That red 
closest to that top left on the cushion is a really tricky ball to land on. There's not much room for error because it's surrounded by yellows. That's what he's looking at now. I think he wants to try and land on it at first attempt. That's a pretty good shot. And it's going to be a tough pop, but if he gets it, he's unlocking the frame in doing so. Unless he feels like playing that shot, he might flick the yellow and lose his cue ball a little bit, which is maybe why he's looking at the one at into the middle first as well. I think he's going to take the tough one on. Yeah, he's just landed so well. I mean, it's not an easy shot, but he's landed as well as he was ever going to on it. Has he just come out enough? Yeah, you, the one above the middle pocket isn't an easy shot. He was hoping to land on it. It looks very tight. It's not like it's an easy pot. If he had to bend it, it would be a problem because it's a difficult enough pot from this angle. So going down the table, it seems to have a clear enough line of sight to the one to the bottom right corner. That's really nicely cued. Oh, he just wanted it to slow down a little bit, though. Being straight doesn't do him any favours. Is he gonna, maybe going to look to try and top this off the jaw and just flick it up? Oh, he had more angle than I thought he did. My apologies. But this has actually been a very, very fine response to what's been a very bizarre start to this game. It's going to be this April that sees Gareth regain that lead. One would, uh, would rather open things up. Yeah, the context of this game's changed now because of the fact that Gareth obviously won that last game against Jimmy. Um, does give him automatic qualification no matter what happens in the final games after this. So all the pressure now on Chris, but at the same time, mm -hmm. Gareth with nothing really to play for in this game may switch off, you never know. But coming off the back of a win already, he probably will want to cement himself at the top of the group by winning every game despite the fact obviously it makes no difference to him but once again Chris has got a bit of a free hit that obviously he knows he's the lesser ranked player of the two so can come in with nothing to lose and if he was to get pick up a result here then I mean it would make things very very interesting between our fan and our fan and Jimmy put all the pressure back onto those two with Chris kind of just having to sit there and see what the final result is it's just such a Pro, isn't he? I just can't imagine Gareth taking his foot off the gas. But I do agree with what you said there. I mean, the fact that Chris, in a way, hasn't got too much to lose and he's got a lot to gain. Winning this match would potentially get him through to the final, which would be a huge achievement. It wouldn't get him directly through. The best he can hope for at this point is a six road shootout, but he'd take that willingly, I'm sure. Yeah, and I mean, the other thing from Chris's mind as well is he could have been out this afternoon at the end of the day our fan did open the door for him at a point that I think everybody probably thought that Chris was out as it was Chris managed to kind of save his bacon with about seven or eight minutes left in that match equalised the scores with about two minutes to go and finds himself in a situation here where actually the game's still in his hands so that's a huge, huge plus, and that's only going to bring Chris confidence. There are times when it's not ideal to have to play matches back to back like Gaz has just done, staying straight out in the arena after his last match, but this is such a short format that I don't think that concern really applies here. It's not exactly exerting himself too much to play two half an hour matches in a row. And then also took him again in the next one with a great comeback. So this is a great opportunity now for Chris to push on for the rest of his season and hopefully get a couple more results. And I think a lot of players would like to see that because he's a good character around the building as well, has been all weekend. But what a break from Gareth. Yeah, this game is all about giving exposure to different players, and Chris has definitely played his part in this weekend's activities. It's not quite time to be writing him off yet, but unfortunately, 
the window is closing for him. Just giving that plenty of thought. I think his concern was that he didn't want to hit the cannon too hard. He didn't want to be knocking the eight ball safe, which is why he's deliberately played a very controlled shot. The only issue is the a the angle that he's now left himself. He's going to be hitting into that eight ball again, which is going to put it into that position that he didn't want it. So he may either play this with more pace. Yeah, did play it with more pace. It's not too bad, but now he's got the issue of those two reds on the left hand side. They there's no real way to land on them. It just about went before. He's just made them a little bit less accessible with that shot. I wonder if Gareth may look at planting them down the line with the big pocket of the yellow. It sounds like a horrible shot, but it's the only real way that he could promote those two reds. Well, he's just opted to roll that one in. I think he's going to take on a, a double into the middle. He's going to have to screw this because he's quite low on it. Obviously, screwing a double then means that that red will straighten up off of the first cushion. Yeah, you can see how low he's getting on the cue ball here. Exactly like that. That's a brilliant shot from Gareth. Phenomenal piece of queuing. That was not the natural angle for that double at all. Gareth Potts had to make that, and he hit that so sweetly. I mean, been in one ranking final, but now in another group final. Reasons to suggest that Arfan's only going to climb, climb the rankings for the rest of the year. However, the one thing that was catching him out on the first day was putting the white in the centre pocket. And for the first time in a while, that's what he's done. The trip to this final will add to his ranking tally. But yeah, coming back to the point about the break, he was actually breaking much better throughout the course of today. As you rightly say, yesterday, not everything was going according to plan. He's got a slightly less controlled break perhaps than Gareth, but we do sometimes see some of the same elements, the cue ball popping up into the air off some of his breaks. He doesn't always elect to use that style. He's got a range of different breaks we've seen across the course of the weekend. Yeah, I think Arfan's natural break is the one where he puts his hand on the table. You notice when Arfan cues how close his, his hand is to the cue and to the, the end of the cue and to the ball as well. It's very close and compact and he tends to just kind of pop his wrist through to try and explode that pack. As it was on that first day, that was the break he was using and it wasn't really working for him. In terms of that natural power off a break, obviously... Gareth's is more natural because of how far away his hand is. Just means that his straight cueing is more fluent when he puts his hand further away for that kind of power break. But it was working for our fan earlier. And I'm not saying that it won't for the rest of this game, but just that first one was just a little bit too too erratic. The break's going to be very important here because... I think we, when we were trying to count how many balls Gareth had missed in kind of open positions, we only got to about four earlier. So you can't really rely on him to give you your chances. Yeah, and immediately, just with that shot, Gareth's kind of unlocked this frame, landed on the one in the middle, moves that yellow out of the way just to give him a bit more clearance for that red that's over the bottom right to try and land on the bottom left, sorry, that to try and land on the eight ball. And it's... Once again, it's just a sign of what Gareth's done all weekend, just being able to unlock finishes, take out problem balls early, and this is potentially going to quickly be one apiece. But it's exactly what our fans going to have to contend with in this game, that he's going to know that even if he puts in a good finish, Gareth is likely to find a response. It's just about consistently finding those finishes and constantly putting your pr player under pressure 
Once again, took a little bit of extra time over that. Makes a ball. It almost feels like Gareth on his break senses when there's an important frame coming up and just knows when to take that little bit of extra time over his break. Yeah, he's a real technician with these kind of things. He was talking about in the studio yesterday about the range of braking options that he's researched and how he can make slight adjustments to his backswing to tweak depending on table conditions and what he's trying to achieve with the brake. I mean, there's a lot of natural talent in there, but that kind of thing, you also just need to practice so many times. He's obviously prepared to put the practice in at braking, which is something that not everyone is, because it's kind of quite laborious when you have to keep racking up the balls, maybe if you're just practicing on your own. Yeah, you'd almost describe Gareth as a little bit of like a pool scientist. The fact that he's constantly experimenting, trying to find this perfect formula. And it feels like this weekend he's come pretty close to being perfect a lot of times. And there's not a lot he does wrong, but it feels like any kind of in inconsistency he just quickly wants rid of, quickly wants a solution to. And that's exactly why he puts in all the work that he does. And that is the reason that he has won the titles that he has. Well, you could see in that interview you were referencing earlier when he was playing a frame of snooker with Stephen Hendry, he was looking pretty handy on a snooker table, even whilst trying to conduct an interview and distracted by other things. He was knocking some balls in. Just such a reliable technique. Yeah, once again, plays the cannon nice. Needed to hit that second red fairly full just to be able to properly push it out of the way. Does that with ease. And that fluke in the last frame has been double downed on. And tall players that are on the ultimate pool circuit all have the capabilities of winning titles on the pro level. But only a certain, only one player can do it at each event. And it doesn't take a lot to get knocked out of them either. It can simply be one mistake, but in a sets format like this, you, you're you going to get a slightly better opportunity, but it's still not great. In our fan situation, OK, he sits in the top 25 of the tall players, but even at 21 second, even at 22nd in the rankings, it still means that there's 21 players that are there or thereabouts that are there to challenge you. And unfortunately for our fan, he's come a come against one of those players that's really at the peak of his powers. We've seen that time and time again at the Pro Series where top players turn up and lose twice in the first round having done almost nothing wrong and the weekend's over. At least this player's championship, you guaranteed a few games. This is the final match of the weekend though and if it's going to go beyond this set, our fan dad is going to need to win it. Yeah, and unfortunately for our fan, Gareth still being on his own break as well means that it's not fully in his fat in his hands. He is going to need Gareth to do him some favours, and he is going to have to play some very good pool himself, which he is doing. But Gareth just seems to have all the answers at the moment. So if you're in our fans corner, you've just got to keep throwing problems and curveballs at him and just hope, beg and pray that at some point Gareth doesn't know how to respond to it. The only strategy really is just to keep him frozen away from the table. You can only focus on what you can do, so just try and keep clearing off your own breaks. Oh, but that, that white ball in the middle pocket has been an absolute burden of his weekend. Look at this break. He's posted three red balls in the white. It's just been a burden of his weekend. He, he plays that break with topspin. And the problem is if you don't quite catch the front ball flush, it either flies off to the left or right. And when you're playing with topspin, it's going to arc into one of those middle pockets. So 
there's always a percentage chance of that happening. And if you're not quite hitting it right all weekend, then chances are always a little bit higher as well. It may just require a bit of a break change if that's going to keep happening to him. Such a bad moment to happen because having got the scores levelled, he's just handing away the opportunity and then it's Gareth's break in the next frame. Yeah, and it was the second frame in a row that he did it. Same, same pocket also. And I think that signs that if Arfan does get to break again, he is going to have to change that break. Because even if he is breaking off and maybe breaking dry, at least don't give Gareth the ball in hand. I mean, that break was as close to the worst scenario as possible. It was one of his best breaks of the match in terms of splitting up balls and potting the object balls. It was just giving that ball in hand was disastrous. It's disastrous because of the fact that he's done so well to keep level with Gareth in this set. He's done all the right things. He's got within the 10-minute shot clock, he's still level, and then he throws in a break like that. And it, it's just going to be killer. And